Hello and welcome to Reentry and Orbital Simulator. I covered this once in Alpha Monday a few weeks ago and I had quite a positive response. A number of people are asking me to create a series on it, so hey look, here it is. A series on reentry. I don't know how long this series is going to last, but if you do want it to last a long time, make sure you're hitting the like button, make sure you're subscribing, make sure you're sharing it, make sure you're leaving comments letting me know what you think. That's way I know to create more and more of this content or this type of content. That's exactly what I'm going to do. So today we are going to start with, well, the Academy. I already did a couple of the Academy missions, Project Mercury lessons, on the Alpha Monday preview that I showed. But I'm going to do it again in sort of an effort to make sure that we've got this series as a complete thing. So make sure you stay tuned as I try to get to grips with the Mercury rocket. Right, the first lesson we're going to go through is going to be the pre-launch. Uh, as you can see, I've already got three stars on this and this. These are the two that I did, but we are going to go ahead and launch into that and take a look at what we get. In the meantime, I'm going to read from the manual for Project Mercury. Uh, let's see. The goal of the Mercury spa spacecraft is to mimic it to the real spacecraft flown by astronauts, both for educational use and simulation. The capsule is modelled after the Mercury Familiarization Manual, SEDR 104 from 1962, used by MA7 and MA8, and contains most of the simple and advanced controls from all the different Mercury capsule configurations, including the satellite clock, the Earth path indicator, the electrical system using three main fuel cells, two standby, one isolated, and so on. All right, here we go. I am going to go into this in a minute. The reason for this choice is that the configuration of spacecraft has all systems developed for Project Mercury and can fly all the real scenarios. Lovely, and it also gives us a link in this manual. I've got a link to the NASA manual. Uh, so that just shows how in-depth this is going to be. It's uh, showing things for the NASA manual. Now, the Mercury module, uh, before we actually get, get going on this, the Mercury module is... Uh, itself or the Project Mercury was the first space program by the United States of America started in 1958 and went through to 1963 only had six flights uh, and the objectives of it were to get into orbit with a manned spacecraft to see how man functions in space and to make sure that we can get man back from space by man here I'm talking about mankind not man and woman. Uh, just just going to point that out. Just mankind as in general. Uh, so during the last decade, technology has ev uh, had evolved to allow the longer way to dream of reaching space. Project Mercury was born on the 7th of October 1958 and lasted almost five years, ending with Cooper's long duration mission where he orbited Earth 22 times. That's quite, that's quite something. 1963, going around Earth 22 times. So, Let's have a look at what we have here. Let's start getting used to this aircraft, or spacecraft, shall I say. Welcome to Project Mercury. Name's Patrick, we'll be instructor. All right, so I'm sitting inside the Mercury space capsule. As you can see, I remember some of the controls here. So this is our Mercury space uh, capsule on top of the Redstone launch vehicle. That's the LV. So the LV is what we get behind if we look at the external view. This is the LV right here. That's what takes us into space, the rocket itself. That there is the capsule. That's the Mercury capsule. Loving the graphics from this, this angle, by the way. That does look really nice. It's actually fairly well made. Considering what it's supposed to resemble, that's very well made. Very, very well made. Right, let's get back into... Uh, oh, not orbital. Ooh, look at Earth, though. Even with an Aurora Borealis... And an Aurora Aust Australis, I think that's what it's called. Uh, right, get back to the commander seat, right. To look around, yep, we've done that. Um, there we go, we've also got the arrow keys to look around like that. The capsule is divided into a few sections on the dashboard, with a given colour to easily know where to look. The left side of the panel has the majority of the fuses, the autopilot, the attitude controls, and the sequencer. So, we've got the sequencer over on this side. As you can see, those are all the fuses. 
We've got some autopilot controls here, uh, which is these ones here, I believe. We've got some of the sequencers over here, and then we've got some of our fuel fuel percentages there, descent rate, altimeter. Uh, let's have a look. So our retro cabin lights, lovely. Uh, photo lights, no idea what that one is. And of course we've got our board, that's our sequencer, so we basically switch that to ready and then we go through everything. Uh, the center one is the es essential gauges, so we've got attitude information here. So attitude information looks like it is uh, here, this looks like attitude information to me. Uh, Earth path indicator looks like that one there. We've got the clocks and the timers right there. Oh no, this is a, pe a periscope. Where's our attitude indicator? Ah, there's an attitude indicator right in front of us. Roll your pitch. There it is. And a translation as well. So that's our periscope. That's our earth path indicator. Lovely. And then on the right, we have radio controls and the environmental control system, the ECS, electrical power systems, the EPS, warning lights with audio switches and some other fuses. Fuses? Yeah, well, whatever. As well as temperature settings. So you can see here we've got some temperature settings there. Uh, we've got our cabin oxygen, oxygen there, we've got our electrical controls there, down there we've got our radios, high frequency, ultra high frequency, things are like that. Emergency oxygen on that side, warning lights, lovely. The ECS works in two separate circuits, one for pressure for suit and one for the pressurized cabin. Even though the cabin is designed to sustain life for a few days, the pressure suit is your primary life support and will give you oxygen if the, cabin's le or the cabin leaks or is depressurized fine. Therefore, it is vital to have a pressure suit that can provide air, keep your body cool and provide air circulation or odor removal. The ECS comes with two fans for the suits. Number one is primary, number two is backup. So let's ensure that the primary fan works. So if I remember this correctly, there we're supposed to switch over here. There we go. One to two. So all we do is we just flick that switch there and I think right click brings it back. So there you go. So that's set to number one. Next, we need to connect the, we need to do the squib battery. What's the squib battery? Um, arming rockets pyrotechnics is required to jettison. Press F5 for command view uh, and arm the squib now. That's this part over here. And we're going to arm the squib. F5, that is F5. And arm squib. Okay. What does Pro do? Does it switch off the. No, it doesn't. There's the squib. Lovely. That's done. The only the only power system that's not armed by the squib is the auto retros. Okay, so what we need to do is it's very sad to accidentally jettison the jettison the retro end. Yeah, that's a that's a good point. So extra security was added, so we'll do that. That should be on during the ascent. Lovely. And the capsule comes with three sets of batteries. That's down here. Main battery, standby batteries, and isolated batteries. Or iso yeah. The squibs are connected to the isolated batteries. Let's make sure the isolated batteries are working. So we need to switch that over to ISO. So we'll go and switch that around to ISO. There you go. And you can see that we have 28 volts, uh, DC volts there. Fantastic. Good. Now we're going to proceed to the attitude panel. Now the attitude panel is up here. And we've got a time zero. So that's there. That button is protected. Left clicking once will remove the protection. Right clicking will set the protection back on. Like so. Before launch this protection should be removed. So you can activate time zero quickly if the timer does not automatically start. So we're going to get rid of that right now. Next up we're going to go to radio view. Now for this I'm not going to actually press F7. F7 does that but we could literally just move to this area if we really wanted to uh, with you know with a little bit of movement um, anyway okay so here we go we've got our radio communication system two modes UHF there we go so that's that and then we have uh, HF which is high frequency now on top of that we've also got high and low power and we can switch between them using the transmit switch which is this one here so you can see that's UHF and HF so we can go there and we're going to go to UHF, which is our primary one. There we go. So that's set to UHF, Roger. Then we've got two systems, low and high power. So high power obviously boosts to, uh, to amplify the signal, so therefore it will go a longer range. Low power is going to be short range. So we're going to switch that to high power. C to open the radio command menu. That goes down here, and we can do radio check. So that's what we're going to do here. 
There you go. Read your 5 by 5 Done. And you'll see, like so. Lovely. Now, we can also do that on the low, and we're going to have to do the exact same thing again. So there you go, that's done. Hopefully that did accept that. There you go. Now when UHF is not available, like for example during atmospheric re-entry, the antenna is going to be jettisoned, so we need to use high frequency. So we need to swap that over and do the exact same thing. We're going to go for radio check on that. There we go, and we're going to do that. Radio check there. Ensure that's fine. Switch that back over to that and get rid of that. Put that back to a low power. Now we're going to press M to get to our mission scratch pad. So our mission scratch pad is going to come up like a little booklet, as you see right here. So this booklet is going to have our mission details, the map, the radio transcripts, and even our own custom notes. So that's many checklists that you can follow. So you can see here we've got a bunch of checklists, all of the checklists you could ever imagine. That's that's a good checklist, right there. We've got 50 things to look at pre-flight. Abbreviated pre-flight is 32, but we've got pre-flight for 50. Full internal power there, final checks, we've got that. The ascent, that's that. Beko, Seco, orbit, once we're in orbit, fly-by-wire, manual, uh, rate command mode, gyro alignment, pre-dark, pre-retro, retro, re-entry, retro, re and landing. Wonderful. By the way, these are engine cutoffs. Just, just to let you know, um, I thought I might, yeah, I should probably tell you that these are different engine cutoffs. Right. There are also lots of systems to learn and understand, and we've just scratched the surface. Don't worry if you don't understand today. Yep, that's fine. And that's done. Uh, get some coffee. Sure. Let's press N to con uh, complete. So do continue. Roger. Go over here. What I could do is I could go into photo mode. And I love the photo mode on this. I really really do. I think it's an amazing photo mode. How do I move backwards and forwards again? Uh, I could probably just do... Hold on. Uh, I did know how to move backwards and forwards and I've forgotten. Anyway. Lens. Get that focal distance. Oh, it's doing that again. Great. Are you going to... Nope. Was this made in Unity 2? I'm just curious about this. Yeah, it's done that. Lovely. Okay, well, fine. We'll, we'll just take it like this, because this is still a fairly good picture. There's our picture taken. In fact, if we were to take two of those pictures, I could probably grab one. I don't know where it saves the pictures. I'm going to have to find that. I'm going to have to figure out where it saves the pictures. Anyway. Okay, so do that and we can go to um, that escape in session we're only 13 minutes in we are going to go into the next one oops Academy and we're going to do the next lesson which is launch and ascent now the ascent is an automated process so that's great let's go to launch and see what we can get Just gotta load through this one. Preparing cockpit state. Here we go. All right, so we're going to go through a launch. So this is the final checks. So this is where we go to checklist and go right there. So that's what we need. So the ascent is an automated process, as we've said. That's fine. The capsule is now in a normal state. When you ingress the capsule before a mission, before you fly over, you need to do a few final steps. So, transmitter needs to be to UHF, so that's down here. That's done. Check. Squib bus needs to be armed, so let's arm them over here. That's checked. We also need to arm that. Go right ahead. There you go. Auto, res uh, auto retro jettison squib's done. Lovely. Now this is going to go into launch control now, so we've, we've done that. I think we've done the suit temperature, all of that stuff is okay. That's done, cabin temperature's fine. This one we need to, we probably should be checking this, uh, like that. Yep, we're good there. We'll switch that back to main, okay. And we don't have to worry about anything else there. We're going to go ahead and 
switch that to launch. Going to get rid of that. If this switch is ready, the rocket will launch on schedule time. Okay, so it's three minutes to launch. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is, once we're gaining altitude, observe, ensure, and report that the time from launch clock has started counting. So we're going to do that when we press C, and we'll get onto the radio menu down there, and we'll do a clock started check. Once we're gaining altitude. For now, this is what we have, which looks lovely. It really does. Um, we could probably have a look at this from outside. Although, really, I, I do wonder what this is going to look like from the outside. I really, really do wonder that. Is this Cape Canaveral? No, no, it can't be. It can't be. It's, it looks too empty to be Cape Canaveral. This is not Kennedy. Even though it looks like it's really close to the water, this is not Kennedy. Where? Hold on. Hold on, where are we? doesn't tell us where we are. We're there. Where on earth is that? And that's the Great Lakes, I assume. Yeah, that's the Great Lakes. So that's the side, that's the eastern seaboard. Why does that look a bit odd? Why does that world map look a bit odd? Don't know. Anyway, everything else we've got to make sure is okay. I think so. Doesn't seem to be any, any sort of problems here. So we should be getting ready for launch in 90 seconds. And this is always the tentative part. I remember watching rocket launches. It was always the last 90 seconds. Everything used to get very hushed and urgent and ooh something's gonna happen but let's make sure it all goes right and I'm going to leave this playing straight all the way through this is going to be interesting so at this point you're sort of strapped in ready to go waiting literally just waiting Sixty seconds. Looks like we're launching at two o'clock on the dot. Yeah, I think that's when we're launching. T minus forty seconds. Now at this point we would probably be doing all these final checks. This is when We'll probably be doing the final checks, making sure everything's going. Um, yeah, the checklist that probably we should be looking at. That's back to normal. Standby battery is off. I, I don't even know if we've checked that. 18 seconds. Yep, that's normal. That's off. Good. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one lift off. All right, uh, lift off and the clock is started. Okay, we're good. Yeah, I know how to do that. Yep, I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Right, clock started. Clock is operational. Good. Okay, now we've got to monitor a whole bunch of things. This music is a bit crazy. Um, so we've got our altitude there. Yes, yes, I know. We'll talk about this uh, G-force meter and everything. That accelerometer is telling us what our G-force is. So at the moment, we're at 2G, which isn't bad at all. That is going to be going up. We've got to have a look at our cabin oxygen, which is absolutely fine. So that's going to be, yes, we're going to try and maintain 5.5 on that. And we've got our cabin pressure. That's looking pretty good. Here we go. Now we're feeling a bit more in our seats. We're coming up to 3G. The rocket is going to be pitching itself, as you can see, that's a pitch program. I'm sure this happens by checking the pitch needle, you can see that moving. If you have a look from external, I wonder what this looks like. Oh, we can't go to external. 
They're captured as two oxygen tanks, one primary and one secondary. The ECS is controlling them automatically. When the primary tank is empty less than 10%, it will switch to the second tank. So ensure that the oxygen levels are 100%. So we're looking over here for the oxygen levels. That's that right there. If they bleed off fast, it seems strange. Diagnose and abort for about 24 hours. Healthy battery shows 24 volts. Check the altitude is increasing when you are below 100,000 feet. Well, we are above 100,000 feet. Check the cabin air temperature is measured in Fahrenheit. If it's too cold or too warm, adjust the temperature settings below the hatch. Rightmost panel. That's uh, this one, it seems. That one there. And that allows us to change the temperature. But we're completely okay at the moment. Never exceed 120 Fahrenheit. Sequence of lights to the left of the main pan panel will be glowing depending on which stage we're in. White means it's not processing, orange means it's processing, and green means the step is complete. Once the tower is jettisoned and the capsule is separated, the ascent is complete. After the ascent, your capsule will rotate 180 degrees in your and position you in a normal attitude automatically. And we're in space. We're definitely in space. Can we go to external now? We can. Fantastic. It's like Kerbal. Except it's real. But it's not real. Mission accomplished. And as you can see, that's where we are and that's where we're going to end up. We did take off from Cape Canaveral. It is Kennedy. Although I thought Kennedy was down here. Maybe I'm mistaken. Okay, we're going to continue just so I can see inside again. Oh, that's us. Look at that. How wonderful does that look? And uh, back in the commander seat. There's the rocket. Look at that. Fantastic. And we're just... Uh, there's our periscope. Looking fantastic. That's, uh, that allows us to have some manual flight. If we wanted to, we could swap through all of these. Make sure all these are okay. As you can see, it's very busy. It's a very, very busy thing. Um, we didn't even get time to read through most of those things whilst we were going through it. It's something to get used to. But it is a wonderful title that's being developed and it looks, it looks wonderful as well. It looks wonderful, it feels wonderful, it's, it really has the feeling of space flight. Including the sort of the hustle and how quickly you've got to do things. Check this, check that, make sure you're doing this, make sure you're doing that. Double check this, if this goes wrong, abort. If that goes wrong, abort. If that goes wrong, abort. Press this button, do this radio check, do that radio check, have a look at this, flick the switch, flick that switch. It's very, very in-depth. And with that, I am going to end this video uh, after going into long range, outside, sure. Why not? That could do for me. I'll even take a screenshot like that. Thank you very much for watching. Please remember to hit the like button if you like this video. Subscribe to the channel for more videos on Reentry Orbital Simulator. Leave a comment in the comments box below letting me know what you think. Don't forget to support me on Patreon, www.patreon.com slash ecgadgets. Your support would be massively, massively appreciated. It would really, really help me out. Allow me to purchase titles like this, for example. What on earth was that? What was that? don't know anyway you can also find me on twitch www.twitch.tv slash ec gadget and you can find me on social media at ec gadget lp for both twitter and instagram that's all from me and i'm going to see you guys next time in re-entry orbital simulator as our retros are about to fire since we're coming back into earth there they go